Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Storytime Spotlight. For this episode, we have a Philadelphia heavy hitter, Hef. How you doing, bud? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Of course, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit down and talk to me about um, not only this release that is coming out on the label, but also some future uh, things that you have coming up that's very exciting to talk about. So just let's just dive into it head first yeah, or cannonball, maybe. whichever way you prefer. First cannonball. things first, where did the name come from? Uh, all right, so this is the, the day old, the age old question. Um, and it's, it's almost what you would expect it to be. So, uh, like a couple of years ago when I first started, um, DJing and producing, I like was stuck on like, I need to figure out a good name. And like for months and months, I would just like say random things to my friends and be like, does that sound cool? And like, nothing was really sticking. And then one day I remember it, I was like, we're driving in the car, I'm sitting in the passenger seat. And like, it might've been around the time that Hugh Hefner died actually. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a couple of years ago. If not, somehow he was brought up in conversation. It might've been Halloween or something. And I was like, you know, it'd be really funny if someone did like a DJ persona where they like wore the robe and like the, the sailor's cap and that was like their thing and they went by Hef or whatever. And I was like, well, actually, I'm not going to do the robe, but what do you guys think of the, the name Hef? And they were like, that actually has like a nice little ring to it. I was like, that I agree. And I changed the spelling. So my name's Phil, P-H. So I spelled it H-E-P-H, Hef. And I was like, that's it. Like, I was like, I have to use that. Like, it's just so good. It's so simple. I wanted something quick and easy. And I just started saying it for weeks to my friends. And next thing you know, I'm like, all right, that's it. We're sold. We're stuck on it. We can't go anywhere else now. There you go. Yeah. Now you're just stuck. You're branded with the name. And yeah, you know, I would, I'm not gonna lie. I would like to see the sailor cap and robe, you know, maybe every once honestly, in a while. Honestly, that would be a good Halloween costume. Honestly, I, mean, I might start doing that yearly or just start wearing that's a good I idea. That's a good I idea. I need to write that down right now. <laughs> I need to go Halloween. Holy so the shit. next question I have for you, what came first, production or DJing? So DJing came first, but they own, the, the time span from DJing to producing was like maybe three months difference mm. because okay. I started DJing at the end of 2019, like December, mm. 2019. And then three months later was March 2020, which is when COVID hit. So like I had done like three months of DJing. I wanted to produce, but I was like, it's tough to do both. I just started mixing and like putting mixes on SoundCloud and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, like it's been a few months. I had my first, I was going to have my first gig ever. Um, I got super lucky and I got on an opening slot for a Mala show at a club here in Philly which was like, I was, dude, I was like, this is nuts. Like, I've only been doing this for a few months. Like, I can't believe I got this already. It was through a friend who like hooked me up. And then COVID hit, the show got canceled. And I'm like, I have no, like, what am I supposed to do now? So I was like, I have a lot of free time. I also just lost my job at that time. So that's why I started DJing. Cause I like, I lost my job. And I was like, I have literally no, nothing to do. I have a lot of free time. And then the pandemic hit and I found myself with even more free time because I couldn't even go look for a job. So I was kind of in this weird limbo kind of space where I was like, I, I don't know what to do with myself. And I just went full tilt and just started by like, I bought a production course. I happened to have some friends that were doing it at the same time. And I was like, just head first, literally the first six to eight or nine months of COVID, I didn't leave this bed. I literally just sat here for like eight to 10 hours. Like it sounds exaggerated, but I literally sat here for eight to 10 hours a day for like six to eight months, just learning as much as I could, you know, the, the old YouTube, um, I had a production course and then I had some buddies that have been doing it for a while. So I would send them tracks for feedback yeah. and like, it was, it just kind of grew from there. And like, after the first month, I was like, oh, I'm making such cool shit. And then I realized, uh, I sent it to my friends for feedback, and I was, they were like, yeah, this is not good. <laughs> like, this is terrible. And I was like, okay, that's what I needed to hear to, like, push myself even farther into it. And that's why I started doing it so often. I was okay. Like, so, you know, now that kind of goes into, like, the next question of what DAW are you using when you're producing? That's a good question. Like so a I am a little bit of that. Uh, no, I'm Ableton guy through and through. That's where I started. That's another one yeah. to the tally. Another one to the tally. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I, I, cause like I had 
uh, one buddy of mine was an FL Studio guy, and he like came over and he had his laptop and he showed me it, and I was like, this doesn't look right, dude. <laughs> like this is before I even knew anything. I was like, there's something up with this. Like I I don't I don't like this. Yeah. And I went and I found like my other buddy was doing Ableton, and I and I went and looked at that, and I was like, this looks good. I like I like the way this looks. Like there's something about this that seems like super simple and easy and like what you see is what you get kind of thing. Like FL was like routing channels and doing all this weird stuff that I, to me, I was like, that seems super unnecessary. Why can't I just drag something onto a channel at, like, and just do it? Like, and just right. edit and play with, you know what I mean? Like just made like Ableton just made more sense to me. Absolutely. So, and that's just like, and I've been on it for, it's been, oh my God, what's it? It's December now. So it's been, a year and a half now because I started in March of 2019. There you so, go. See, and yeah. it's great too to kind of see the progress starting out making your tracks and you know it kind of like hurts your ears to listen to those tracks, but that's kind of like a, a nice reminder to let you know that the more time that you put into it, the more effort, the more uh, tutorials that you go through, you start to realize, you know what, like you got to master this craft one way or another. And you can just see, I'm pretty sure. And same for me, you know, the music that I was first making, I mean, God, I don't even want to, I don't want to talk about it. But, talk about it right. Like, <laughs> right. And, um, it's, it's just always nice to see the growth, uh, especially in yourself, um, to be able to make some music. And then you're like, wow, like this is actually makes people want to dance and groove. So, yeah. What gave you the inspiration behind the track Set Me Free? Okay, so that one, it was honestly a track. It was the first track that I made where I was like, this could be something. And the way I knew I had something with it is because during quarantine, a lot of DJs and producers were doing feedback streams. And I was a frequent goer of the Truth and Lies feedback stream. Shout out, Ian um uh, like that shit like they they killed it like i did lessons with ian um and like they're they were amazing they were doing it weekly um ian and ryan sorry um they were doing it weekly and like i was in their stream every single week sending them music and like the first month or so was really brutal because they gave it to they give it to you straight yeah. like they would rip you apart and like i was sending them stuff and they were just ro ripping it and i was like oh my god like I need, I need, I need to learn a lot more. <laughs> and then I, I sent them that track and it was the first track that they like, they were like, yo, this is really good. They gave the way they say, the way they give you like the thumbs up is they wear a horse head on their head and they like jam out to it during the, during the feedback stream. And I got a horse head. That was my goal. I was like, I need to get a horse head at some point during stream. And um they gave me the horse head and I was like that is awesome like that was like a goal I was like that makes me feel like okay like I really have something here like that's so cool and that was a little while ago it was like six months ago or so maybe a little maybe probably a little more honestly and ever since then I've been tweaking it and all that and stuff and it finally made its way to you guys and um like without Ian without that without Ian and Ryan and the feedback stream it wouldn't have gotten to where it has because they still ripped it but they were like it's really good they, they're like it's good but we're still gonna rip you apart on it yeah it's you like, definitely you definitely in the industry need that um honest feedback and yeah i'm i'll be making a track thinking the same thing i'm thinking like jamming out hearing the same eight bar loop over and i'm like this is fire mm -hmm. so fire and then yeah you know, send it off to somebody and they're like um uh, crickets <laughs> like you know it's good if they respond and if it takes them a day or two it's kind of like uh oh, right it probably wasn't the best they were thinking about it like exactly. what do they how do we say something to not hurt this guy's feelings <laughs> exactly so now that you're starting to play more bigger shows how do you feel about you opening up for these big artists and getting the chance to play your own music compared to when you first were starting playing i don't know if you had music that you were playing when you first started but now that you're no. playing bigger shows like for instance i know that you just opened up for chami not too long ago mm -hmm. and you're opening up for chris lake uh this upcoming friday so those are both huge Dude. massive legends Great. in the game how does it feel to be not only share the stage with them but to also play your own music while you're on this stage with these legends yeah, that's, that is so true. Because in the beginning, when I was going to do that first show for Mala a year and a half ago, I was going to play no original music. And I hated that, honestly. I hated that I was going to go up there and play a bunch of other people's music. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just like, I, it was like almost like imposter syndrome kind of thing. It's like, 
I feel like I don't belong here if I'm playing a show and I can't play a single song that's that's original of mine. And so I was like super nervous about that, honestly, a year and a half ago when I first started. So I'm like almost like it's a blessing to me in disguise kind of that COVID hit because I was like, wow, this gives that was part of my motivation of like going at it so deep because I was like, wow, like I have the time. Like I can really like I have the time. time. I have yeah, the time. no, like that's how I was like I got I was, time I was, today. I got time today. Yeah. And like the thing right. was at the beginning of COVID, no one knew how long it was gonna last. So that's why I was just like every day, all day, it's all I did. Cause I was like, I anything can go back to normal anytime now. And I wanna be prepared and I wanna be able to play something original of mine in a set to people now. So that was a year and a half ago to to, to this Friday, I'll be playing at least 10, 10 original songs. There you go. Song, which that's is I'm like, that's, that's the first time I'll, I'll be able to do that. Like it, a few weeks ago I did it, but I was, I only had 45 minutes at the Chami show. So like, I couldn't just blast a bunch of my own stuff. Cause it just doesn't really, I, I don't want to do that. I want to play other people's stuff too, but this Friday I have an hour and a half. Right. So it gives me a lot of time to like play and mix my stuff with other people's stuff and just see how things go and like i'm super super excited to do that because it's gonna be the first time i'll really be able to yeah no it, also what's pretty cool about having your own music played especially you're mentioning 10 plus tracks i remember uh when i would first start playing shows with original music i would always like grab the mic and be like oh this is some new music but then it got oh, to the point God. where it's like there's so much like new music are you really gonna grab the mic every time be like this is a new one this is a new one then instead you're just like all right i don't need to announce unless it's like the one that's so solid that you're like i have to let them know this is yeah you yes. know like but the yeah. other ones you're just gonna like let it go through and you're just kind of like living your life and having a great time while you're up there djing and then you're seeing the reaction to like yeah. in essence what you're filling in the bedroom when you're making it and it's crazy that you come right. with an idea to the DAW you put it into the DAW you're yep. jamming out in your headphones jumping around in your room just making tunes next thing you know you're in front of a crowd and you're seeing other people jump around to you you're like thing. full circle it's mind, mind blowing it really is Come I did on. I played I played an original at the Chami show and it was one of the like most, it got a big response. It was one of the most like reactions from the crowd of any of the songs I played that night. And I was like, holy shit, I made that. Like, that was crazy to me. And like, um, I'm so excited. So this Friday, I'm like, I just wrapped up like three or four new ones in the last few weeks, like a couple collabs. And I'm just stoked to get those. Like, I'm probably gonna do what you're saying. Like, I'm gonna hop on the mic for one of them. One super solid. <laughs> it'll be my last one the closing song because i'm super excited for that one because i actually hit up a buddy of mine who plays the saxophone and he recorded and freestyled live saxophone over my track so because i had a sample like a like a trumpet sample in there that i used so i made the song and then i was like holy shit why would i use this stupid sample when i have literally someone i know who i can get to like fill that sample space with a real saxophone and like give it real like human flair yeah and, and like that's the one i'm super excited for and like that's when i'll probably have to be like all right like thank you and like i just finished this song featuring my buddy like playing the saxophone and like i i'm super excited for that one because utilizing one your resources at its best yeah. there you go it's, okay so yeah. question though introvert or extrovert oh dude that's a good question honestly i am literally 50 50 both because okay. i i love to go out and like party and meet people and talk and have good conversations and like you know be wild and stuff but then again i also absolutely love sitting on the couch and watching tv and doing absolutely nothing and being by myself okay uh, like, literally i'm like the last two weekends i've been home friday saturday sunday and not gone anywhere, worked on music, watched TV, and like I haven't done anything. But oh, then this awesome. weekend, I know like I'm gonna play a show Friday and then something else, and I'm gonna go like I'm gonna party, you know? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. it's, I balance, I like to balance them because honestly, it, I feel like going out too often is, isn't good for you. And I also feel like staying home and being by yourself too much is, isn't good for you either. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people can relate relate to that because you know you just have to balance and especially being with this this past year in COVID, I honestly discovered that about myself that I do like being home and I do like being by myself and like or just like hanging out with my girlfriend or you know just sitting just sitting around and being on my own and and having like quiet time or whatever or just working on music and I like that I feel, I realize I like that a lot 
Like, because before I feel like I would always be like, if I'm not out, if I'm not hanging out with people, I'm like, not, you know, I'm, I'm stagnant or, you know, I'm not. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh, oh. exactly. And now it's like, I don't mind it so much because I'm like, there'll be um, another show next weekend or whatever, yeah. you know, another festival and, and stuff like that. So it's helped me grow a little bit in that regard. What's your go-to snack? Oh, that's a great question. I love, I love like sweets and desserts and stuff. Um, I, so I want to take you as like a peanut pistachio guy personally. Okay. Okay. So that's funny you say that because I, um, I used to be, so I, I literally this past like couple weeks am transitioning from like big junk food and like COVID times of like just sitting around and eating food and just smoking weed all the time <laughs> to like, I need to like get healthy. And like, if you would ask me a month ago, I would have been like, brownies dessert chocolate ice cream like that's my shit but now i'm like i today i literally bought dates and mangoes and like pistachios like <laughs> who are you becoming <laughs> literally today who's literally, this guy <laughs> yeah who the fuck is this guy literally today and like i bought a gym membership a week ago like you got me in this weird transition period of like not smoking as much weed and like working out and like being healthy and honestly the last couple of weeks of doing that i feel i feel a lot better well, health is wealth. So good, good for you that you're making the step yeah. into that. And you know, everyone's got to take baby steps. And the first step is actually taking the step to the next yeah. step. And you are right there where you're starting to eat better. You're, you got the gym membership and all of that. It's good mental clarity as well to go and work out and do some physical activity. So other than the gym, other than production, other than DJing, what's a hobby of yours? Um, I, I don't know if people consider it a hobby, but I'm a huge Marvel guy. Okay. I love the Marvel movies and I like keep up with them very, like to an almost obsessive degree. Like I love, like I read all the news. I watch the movies. Like I go to bed to a different Marvel movie every day. Okay. Like, so in your personal opinion, since now you're saying you're a Marvel fan and I'm just curious here. Yeah. Who would win in a fight? Thor or Iron Man? Oh, Thor. Not even question. You Thor? sure? You positive yeah. on that one? Hundred percent. Thor would beat Iron Man's ass. Okay, okay. Only because like Thor is literally like superhuman, and Iron Man is just a suit, which it's yeah. it is a metal alloy whatever suit. But Thor would just rip it off him and, and would just break. rip it off him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, like Thor and Hulk, that is a good fight because they're both true. like monsters you know like that's that i don't know that's a tough one and they have fought in the movies a couple times and it's like i think they fought like two or three times twice twice two big ones i know and it's like 50 yeah. 50 in, so, the, like, in the marvel comic book i remember at the very end the world uh ends and it's just hulk that survives and he actually has to uh i forget what the guy's name is not the hulk but whatever the actual person's name is he Bruce wants Bruce to yeah yeah, yeah yeah he wants to die but hulk every time he tries to kill himself hulk like stops him from dying and yeah. so it's the end of the world and it's pretty crazy to see like where that whole uh, complex series of the world where they place it, how everything ends, and only the only superhero that yeah. really that survived is Hulk, in, in essence. Hulk. And then blah blah blah. But anyways, anyways, no, about that's Marvel cool. Time, right? I hope they take it in that direction. <laughs> the movies are more. Like that sounds like a cool storyline. You go, you're on a cruise, you get stranded on an island. You get three items besides food and water. What are you okay. taking? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I would probably, cause I don't play it too much anymore. Do I have power? Do I have like electricity? I guess not. You're on an island. So I, yeah. you have whatever, you have whatever you want to take with you. Okay. You got some solar <laughs> panels. You got a Tesla. You got, <laughs> yeah, right. let's just say for the hell of it, you got power on the island. Power. Okay. I guess cause I, I don't play it too much anymore, but I'd probably bring like a PS5 to, for entertainment. Okay. I'd probably bring like um that's a good question i would probably bring some way to watch a marvel movie like maybe a, the whole box set i'd bring the whole box set of marvel movies okay. and i'd probably bring my girlfriend and that's girlfriend. what you can bring yeah you can't not <laughs> say that she's gonna watch this but like you and, uh, have three like, choices <laughs> yeah and i couldn't be one of them no you are you are yeah, so, you yeah. and so i'd be content for the rest of my life that's all i need there you go. There you go. Simple, simple things, you know, simple things. So 
in a day to day, you wake up, you brush your teeth. What do you do after that? What is your normal day to day errands that you run? Or not even errands. Let's just run me through a day to day. MTV Cribs, come on in. What 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 are we seeing throughout the day? Yeah. Uh, so I recently got a job at a nice restaurant downtown in Philly called Chima. It's a Brazilian steakhouse. Ooh. I don't know if you've had like if you've had that before. Like I, mm. I love food as well. Oh, that's like another thing. We'll talk about that later. Um, so I love food, but I um I work at a Brazilian steakhouse. I'm their events manager. So I'm actually like booking and like hosting, not hosting, but like just booking and making sure like the events in the restaurant go well. Um, so that's kind of what I do when I wake up. I hope my boss doesn't see this, but I wake up at like 11 or 12 every day when I should probably be up like way earlier than that. Yeah. But like I, the nature of the job is like, I, don't, I just have to kind of wait for calls and like follow up with clients to make sure that everything's like set for their party and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I wake up, I probably brush my teeth, whatever. I start, you know, I get calls to set up bookings. I usually, I go like two days I work from home. So like today I was working from home and then I'm three days I'm like in the restaurant, you know, doing deposits, you know, running things, making sure that the, the things are set for the weekend. Um, so that's my like first half of my day from like 11 or noon to like five or six. And then I'll get home a month ago. I would have been like, Oh, I get home. I like, it's time to like smoke some weed and like sit around and watch TV and whatever. But now it's like, I, I'm trying to like go to the gym now after work. Um, then I eat dinner and then I either spend my night time and I'm like, I'm like a night owl. So I love being up late. So I, my bedtime is like 4am every day. Ouch. I don't I haven't gone yet. I mean, it's like just the it's just who I am. I've been like that for a really Ouch. long time. Ouch. I know. It hurts I know. You say that. I know. Well, that's why I'm sleeping till eleven or noon every day. Yeah, you know, that, makes that would make sense. Yeah. Um, so you 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 deal with work. You have your girlfriend. So pretty much your day is pretty much done at that point. You find the time in your day when you're able to uh, work on music and build your brand up more and figure out what the next move is. So and all in all, you're just, you got the, you got the dream, but currently we're just working with reality. And one day we're hoping that yeah. the dream ends up paying off. So, you know, you got to stick to the grind and it's a long process. You know, you're, 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 you're still very fresh into the scene. Oh, I know. Um, I know. And, but the fact that you're able to, um, have this resume of artists that you've been on the same lineup for that's pretty massive to say um is yeah. there anything else that you would like to add to this anything that you would like to say give a shout out to somebody um the floor is yours yeah go. Uh, all right so <laughs> i mean i shout out all the like honestly all the amazing people i met over quarantine in like the discords and everything like that truth and lies um my homie sam where we, we we're working on some cool stuff together um we're planning like uh, on the lower planning a show series to start next year um at a cool venue in the city uh that's like very hush hush right now um uh we're all we have plans to try to start putting out music on ourselves on a label possibly of our own creation mm -hmm. um just because we want to like you know he's been doing the independent thing for a while like he has like six or seven independent releases and they've all done really well um and i've done a couple myself they've done okay but we have like met some people that can definitely like elevate us and we want to try to do that and like do that for other people as well so like it's not just about us like our mantra is really like find a community build a community and like make good genuine friendships and like if you can support other people as much as possible like it'll always come you know full circle and like that's just the way things are and that's the way it should be like you put out good things in the world and you like give other people shout outs and opportunities and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to come back whether, you know, whether on purpose or by accident, like just put it out there. And like, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Like we had a show series over the summer, this past summer. Um, there's this place called graffiti pier in the city, which is kind of like a abandoned pier type place, but it's like a lot of people go there and we would go there over the summer. We did, we did five of them, like one a month from like, june to june july like june july august september october like for like five months we did one every month and we would go out there in like 
the hot and the heat and like drag speakers and tables and our decks and set it up there and like we would just make these crazy ass flyers and we would just hit up people that we've met on instagram or people in the city and be like yo like we're gonna go set up all this stuff like come on out like anyone can play just come hang out we'll put you on the flyer and let's just like have a good time and it started out like pretty small and it grew into like something crazy honestly our last show where there's like 200 people there and it was all word of mouth it was free like we weren't charging money it wasn't about that it was just like we're gonna set up and play here so you can either come and hang out or not like you know it wasn't (laughs) no pressure um so that was super cool um and we're like trying to take that idea into a more like legitimate direction next year um and just keep growing and like try to take as many people as we can with us like our photographer friends like we're trying to like we pay them for work all the time because we just use them and help them out um we have a vj friend who's like just starting out this past year or two and like he's been doing all our visuals and stuff and like i'll be using all his visuals at the chris lake show and just like little things like that like finding your you know your people and like how can you guys support each other and like use each other's strengths to to build each other up and then at the end of the day absolutely absolutely it's a team effort yeah exactly it's, nothing's done by by yourself i know that's like that's impossible it's gonna be stressful you know? if you try it's gonna be stressful yeah if you try. i'm not saying it can't be done it's gonna be stressful right. if you try though <laughs> right but it's also more fun to go with friends like do it with your homies like that's what it's all about um go. so we're gonna try to keep doing that and, and ride that wave and keep going and keep going as much as we can perfect perfect so you know you know how that is like being with the label like everyone's a homie you know same thing everyone's oh, yeah. fan yeah, absolutely. And and what, what you begin to realize is it's it's not uh it's not always gonna be about you in essence. If you're a giving person, like you you find gratification by seeing other people succeed and to give other people some spotlight and for them to shine, and then it's like, wow, look at this opportunity that we took and we we took a risk on somebody and this person actually ended up doing great and is actually a kind hearted yeah. person and is very cool and just needed a, a needed a platform to get their music heard on or for someone to know who they're about and to give them a platform and if you're able to give them that and they have uh just a good vision good mindset and it's like hey you know welcome to the family and uh let's yeah. just uh let's just let's take over the world one one exactly. release at a time i love that and like whenever someone gives me an opportunity, I try to like find a way however I can to repay them somehow, yeah. whether it be just like recommending them to a venue or like whatever, sharing them on my story, whatever I can do. If someone shows me love, I always want to make sure I do the same thing back, you know, and all comes yeah, back I'm, I'm, I completely understand the grind and I appreciate you taking the time out of yeah, the man. day today to give me this wonderful interview and insight on who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another Storytime Spotlight with the Philly heavy hitter, Hef. My name is Matt Campbell. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Yes, sir.